So we're here at uh, Trendmark Industries. We got Jordan over here, the burden part. Hello, Jordan. Hello. So, can you explain some of these machines to me? Uh, so right behind me, we have a three-axis mill from Haas, uh, and it just moves up and down, left and right. And over to our. You want to show me? <laughs> right here, we have a five-axis mill. And so what this is capable of doing is you're up and down, left and right, just like that machine, but also it will be able to spin and rotate and bank sideways, giving you five axes of motion all at one time. So Jordan, how'd you get into this? I got into machining uh, because I needed a job and it was available. Uh, I was interested in drafting and design. That's what I went to school for. And somebody had said, well, machinists use a lot of blueprints. So I thought with my background, I could get in to kind of my trade. Uh, I didn't necessarily want to become a machinist. I wanted to be the guy drawing the prints. And that's how I, that's where I started. And now where I am now is I am the guy designing and making the prints, but also I program the machines. And then I also get to make the parts. So it, it starts off with an idea, sometimes on a napkin or a piece of paper, and I figure out how to make it into a solid model on the computer, and then figure out how to whittle that solid model out of a solid piece of uh, material, whether it be aluminum or we've done plastic or steels. Uh, it's just what your imagination can take you. What was the last part you just 3D printed? Could you show me that one side of the Where'd that go? Uh, oh, there. Okay. So, explain this, and not so much what the part is. I know it's you know a, a part that you're designing right now, but. You know, take me through the concepts of how did you get that part made uh, to that, where did you start with that? You started that in CAD, right? So we started with a handmade piece that we wanted to make in production. So I took a lot of measurements with the available equipment I had and started piecing together all those measurements inside a CAD to create the solid shape and moved it around, made it look a little prettier, and then decided that we need to 3D print this as a mock-up to make sure that it'll fit and work as intended before taking the extra time to make it out of metal. Now you also told me that's not the final design. You took a lot of features out or the cosmetic features out just to simplify the 3D printing, correct? Correct, this is just a base base shape just to make sure that the holes and the mounting surfaces are all where they need to be. And you got no models of the other components to fit them together in 3D modeling so you are really winging this and uh, that's why we 3D print it first so that we can test it and then it's it's a lot faster and cheaper making it out of plastic than establishing a full metal concept first. And that's got a lot of contours and arcs I mean that's not going to be easy to uh, tool up into the future yeah. so and what I mean by that is you know you got fixturing and tooling to go into production these guys at Trendmark they're designing and developing concepts to prototypes and uh, to satisfy the customers so let's uh, go over what is this machine right behind you so the machine behind me is a Haas lathe and so that's different from those that the material spins and the tools are what are called static or stationary. They move, but the, the cutter themselves is not rotating as in the mill. So uh, <laughs> this also has availability that the tools can move, and that's called fourth axis machining and, or with live tooling. Uh, so it's kind of a, does a little bit of everything, but not so it's kind of like a mill and a lathe in one machine? Kind, yeah, kind of. Okay. 
it, it opens up a lot of possibilities to reduce your setups and make more of a part in one at one time. Okay. So what's that right behind it? What is that? So this behind it is just a, this is what we call a bar feeder. And what that can do is load in multiple pieces of material and the machine will automatically feed them into the uh, CNC. And that allows you to make continuous runs of the same part over and over and over autonomously. Okay. Anything else you want to tell me about your experience as a machinist? It's, it's just been a fun journey. Uh, learning at, If you don't learn something every day, you're not doing it right. That's what I was always told. Uh, find something to learn every day, build on it, and keep growing. It, it really opens up possibilities of a lot of fun with your imagination, turning ideas into solid things that you can hold on to and share with the world. What I personally find is uh, exciting for me too, my personal opinion, because I've been machining a long time. And uh, it's always cool to see that part out in, you know, you guys are doing concept parts and things like that. So when you get it done, you, you know, you see it that one time. But in the production end, I get to see that part on a car, or vehicle, a motorcycle, a uh, boat, you know, and they're, they're functional parts, you know. And that's coming from my hands. So that's where I, I get excited about machining. All right, and we will talk to you later, Jordan. Thank you very much. I appreciate it. Traveling Machinist out. Enjoy and be kind.